everybody, and welcome back to Beards, Bourbon, and Games. I'm your co-host, Mike, and with me is this weird thing, Conqueror Corey. And I know you're tired of hearing this, but we love modding on this channel. Oh, yeah. And we also love retro gaming. Our friends at 8-Bit, though, have released an awesome kit to go with the original N64 controller. I don't know if you remember... Was it last year or a couple months back? It, it, a couple years or whatever. Nintendo released a Bluetooth N64 controller. That thing was really hard to get a hold of and it was really expensive for what it was. It was the original gray. It looked like they took basically the original controller and just put a Bluetooth adapter into it, basically. Pretty much. 8-Bit Doe just said, well, we can probably do that better. So they have released this upgrade kit to turn a N64 controller into a Bluetooth adapter controller that can play on the Switch, that can play on your PC, Android, basically anything Bluetooth compatible. Steam Deck and Mac, for those of you that game on that, I'm sure the three of you are excited. <laughs> <laughs> Got him! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, let's take a look at it. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Oh. Oh, teeth on here. Yeah. Woo! Oh, my teeth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in the box here, we do have the, um, we have the instruction booklet. We are keeping that because the 8 bit has a habit of doing these little combination things sometimes. Yes. I don't think this one does, but we do got a little, that's a, that's a nice screwdriver. That's a nice screwdriver. I mean, it's no thrills. It does the job. That's also what- Not a word, <laughs> not a word. That's what Mr. Conqueror says about Gore. I, I knew that was coming. <laughs> I said it, I knew it. Um, USB-C. That's EU, cool. EU will be happy. <laughs> um, all those things got weight to them. You ever notice that? Yeah, uh, they actually feel really good. This actually feels like Nintendo plastic. Um, it, no, it's not your plastic Nintendo. Don't sue them. Please don't sue them. <laughs> My goodness gracious. Um, so yeah, this goes on the back of the controller and it looks like that's it. It's a battery pack? Uh, I think it's a battery pack, rumble pack, and the Bluetooth adapter is built into that. Oh, okay. If I remember correctly. I do see the switch home button. I do see the 8-bit dough button. I do see the ZR button. Um, and that is because there is a missing button on the on the controller there. So um, the switch has uh, four buttons. <laughs> I am not proud how long it took me to remember that. It does. Uh, it's got four, it's got four buttons and there's only three on the back of this one. So they did add this button here. So that way you could get that additional ZR you... action going on. Uh, you have to be a three handed alien. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, that's, that's not too bad. Let's see what's in here. Ooh, ooh, is this what I think it is? Oh, it is. It is. So this is a joystick replacement, but not any joystick replacement. It is a hollow joystick replacement, which is the highest level of joystick that you can get. Well, and reason. So, because these were really bad to, to uh, break, and you, I, I know why they were really bad to break, is because we did that as a kid. Ah, thank you, Super Mario 64. Nintendo knew exactly what they were doing. Yep. Um, but yeah, so we did, we did a replacement tutorial before, but we replaced it with the same type of stick. So this one right. is actually going to be a much better improvement um, yeah, so it's not bad. These aren't hard to replace either. They're pretty, no, they're, they're pretty, pretty easy. Forward. And now on to the main show we have here. We have the main board. So basically the way this is going to work is we're going to take the housing off of that, take the wires, take, it, take the whole guts out, leave the buttons basically, and we're going to install this right here. <laughs> take the guts, take leave the, gut, the buttons. The, 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 like, take the guts, leave the buttons. <laughs> um... But uh, yeah, this one is just a basic board that looks like the regular board. The only difference is that you do have a battery attached to the back of it. That... The cool thing about this is this controller doesn't work at all. We hook this up to an N64, it doesn't work. But we're gonna be able to save the controller by putting this stuff back into it to basically resurrect this controller. Because these, are, these atomic see-through controllers weren't actually that common, if I remember correctly. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you have a million of these. I think these came in the, I think this came in an N64 bundle that you bought. 
if I remember correctly. Um, it was a later edition. Not 100% sure on that. I'll have to look that up, but it doesn't work at all. So we're, we're actually ever going to save this. Yeah. Which is great. So uh, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get into this. Now? Oh, let's go. All right. Well, I have to say that 8 Bit Doe has been going above and beyond on their kits uh, lately. Um, at this point, we put a few of these together. Uh, we have some other videos coming out with some other ones in the future. But um, this one is just, just amazing. So the first thing you got to do is, of course, take this sucker apart. Uh, there is uh, multiple screws you have to pull out. They are all the same size, so you can kind of put them into a pile on the side, except for the two that are inside where the memory card slash rumble pack would go. Well, way to go, Nintendo. I was absolutely surprised with this. They didn't use those, those crappy little weird screws that we went out in the middle of the night looking for a screwdriver to fit and only found one in the freaking town. And it took for... Sorry, I was, I was going on a rant there. <laughs> Oh, they didn't use one of those weird triangle screws that they typically use or whatever it is. It is just a Phillips screw. That is it. Wow. Okay. All right. And again, these two it's screws that are in here inside of this pack, those are different. Uh, you want to set those to the side and they can be kind of hard to get to and kind of hard to get out. So um, just kind of be careful with it. I think when I took one of these apart before, I accidentally stripped the screw. That's always the risk with these old controllers is that you always run that risk of, of that the material degrading. And if you're not careful, you end up threading it or stripping it. And if you strip it, you're hurting. It's, it's going to be next to impossible to get it out. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I looked at the instructions, which is something I usually don't do. <laughs> hey, hey, guys, this looks right. I'm just start yanking things out. <laughs> but uh, it looks like we're taking up the original joystick. Yes, this is all a Joy-Con, but right, it, it's it's so hard not to. But this is the original joystick that came with it. You're going to want to save this rubber piece, and you're uh, that comes off of it, and you're going to want to save the top buttons and the top rubber pieces, and then you're just going to pull the rest of the whole thing out. Uh, you don't need any of that. You can just toss it behind you because, oh, in our case, this controller is actually dead, so there's no point in keeping any of the crap. Take the guts, leave the buttons. <laughs> As you'll see here, I'm going to actually going to pull this out and I'm going to kind of dry fit it to kind of get an idea. Um, one thing I want to point out to you, if you see on the top of this where the buttons are, that's going to be the hardest part of this entire install. Just kind of remember that. We'll talk a little bit more about it. While you have this apart, it's the perfect time to clean it. Over, uh, I go over this every time we deal with a controller. Over the course of using a controller, your skin cells get into it. All kinds of weird things happen. It gets, uh, it gets nasty. I'm even taking a little blue pick to kind of clean inside of all the little edges. We use our old friend Windex to do this because it's kind of a gentle cleaner on those. You'll notice when I first started doing this, I didn't actually pull the buttons out. Do that. Just, just pull the buttons out. I was trying to be smart here and not do it, but I ended up having to do it anyway to make sure I got a deep clean. So just save yourself the hassle of actually dropping all the buttons on the floor and just remove the buttons. Right. And you might as well at this point. Like, you got the case off anyways. It, it, it just behooves you to just go ahead and clean it while you're at it. Um, it'll, help, it'll help keep the health of your buttons, you know, keep them getting all sticky and all kinds of crud getting down in them. So, yeah, just take take the extra five minutes. You'll thank yourself later on it. You can see as I'm cleaning this, that thing just gets dirty and dirty. This controller was nasty. I, I, it just, ugh. Once you get it completely clean, you'll want to put your buttons back in. Um, the good news about these is that the buttons only go in one way. So you don't have to worry about trying to find which way they go in. They're kind of a weird triangle or a weird uh, square cutouts that only line up to those buttons that go into that slot. So... Once you get those all in there, you'll take the membrane and uh, attach the membrane after you give it a good clean too. Just make sure, just make sure that there's not anything on those. You repeat the same thing with the start button, uh, the e pad. I think that's it on that right now. 
You know, of all the companies, I think 8-Bit Doe has been the closest to get to Nintendo's patented D-pad. While we're thinking about it. You're right, on all their controllers that they make? Yes, very much so. It's the one that feels the same. For those that don't know, Nintendo patented their D-pad. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, because it's so good. You should, we wish other people could use it. I mean, I have to say the Switch Pro Controller is still one of my favorite controllers. It's just, it's it, on the whole. It, it's, it's phenomenal. My, I, mine's like five years old, still going. But back to the video. When you put these in here, this is what I was talking about with these top buttons. You've got to be very careful when you're slotting these in because that line is very thick and it's really hard to move. I was really, really scared about breaking it off by accident. Um, so you'll kind of line it up, kind of figure out how, it's, how you're going to put those in there, and then you'll add your rubber bits back to it um, and you'll kind of slide them in to the, there's a little slot that they go into and do the same thing on the other side Ooh, that looks painful it is very hard to get in. you'll know it's very hard to get into i think at one point in time this video it just like pops out again it's just it, it's a pain in the butt there's no way around it i'm going to clean the buttons uh, and they go back on right on top now this is a this is actually a hollow joystick that comes with it um, which works so much better than the originals um, it's kind of a really neat and expensive kit for everything that it comes with you'll just attach the three screws to plug it back in and then just add it and click it to the board it's a super simple installation we have another video on this channel of just how to replace this part it's it's, it's very very easy I, I want to take a second and point out that it is genius that they included that in this kit mm -hmm. there so many of those break and had drift and mario party killed so many of these and uh the hollow sticks just they have a lot lot they have a lot longer shelf life they're more accurate and they don't have stick drift once you get that installed you'll snap in the back button which is the z button onto the uh, onto the board. This is another one that the wire was pretty thick. I had to kind of wiggle it around. You'll see me fighting with it a little bit. Um, but there's just these little hooks on the sides that it kind of pops right into. Um, not too hard at all once you get it lined up. You want to make sure you keep your little rubber piece on there. Be messing with those top triggers again. They just don't feel right to me. Where we slide the button in, just kind of lays on there. And there's another piece that goes in the top where the cable used to come out. This is the LED indicator. It just slides right in there. And then once you get that in there, you're ready to close up. Um, you'll notice I have some issues here. It's the buttons. It is getting those buttons to line up and get in there correctly. You're going to have to fiddle with it. You're going to have to mess with it. Um, but luckily, it's a one and done kind of thing. So once you do get it in there, it's good to go. <laughs> the LED indicator, is it attached to that board or did you have to connect it somewhere on that? The, L the LED is actually on the board already. That's just a a clear piece to make it light uh, up. A uh, uh, window, a window of sorts. Gotcha, gotcha. It, and it basically fills that hole so it doesn't... Uh, so there's not just like a, an empty hole there. You know, fill that hole, hole filler. <laughs> I think after, it's really cool how they programmed it. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, you're good. It's just after many hours of messing with it, I finally get that to connect there. You were saying? Oh, I was just saying, I, I hope they expand this to all the controllers and stuff. And I think they do. I think they're they're already rolling out the kits for some of the others, like the PlayStation and the others. So, mm -hmm. um, really cool, especially adding that hollow stick was a, was just genius. And I know some purists are going to want, want the original joysticks, which you could, I guess, use the original joystick with it. But it it just the technology is so much better than the hollow sticks. Oh yeah. We're still getting the same and, feel and the same buttons and everything with, with this. It's just, uh, just the holostick's going to work and be more accurate. 
Once you get all that plugged in, the only other thing you have to do is plug this part in. This is a another thing that was a little bit of an issue. You have to kind of wiggle around and get it to slide in there, and eventually it'll snap in. Um, I had to be a little hard on it, so don't feel like you're breaking it. Well, uh, that wasn't horrible, but it was a bit of a doozy. Um, as you saw in the video when I was talking about some of the buttons up top were really hard to actually get into place. Um, man, the F these controllers are so nasty when you do them. Uh, make sure you take the time to clean them out. The pack on the back isn't completely aligned with where they put the, I guess the connector for the pack. So watch that. I had to kind of wiggle it around to actually get it to go in all the way. Um, but other than that, uh, I've hooked it up to the Switch. It's working great. We've hooked it up to this. It's worked amazing. The cool thing about this too is it has two modes. It has one for the Switch and it has another, it's like S on the back and then you switch over to D and that's what you can hook up to Bluetooth stuff with. <laughs> Um, it's actually made specifically for the Switch, so you can actually hook up and play those old N64 games on there. It worked really good. I didn't have an issue with it. Um, I think it's made really, really well. I'm glad that I used this broken uh, Atomic Purple controller because you can see the cool insides of it, and I think that's really neat. Um, overall, I'm just I'm really impressed with it. The the new Hollow Stick works really, really good. It's, it's night and day the difference in that you, you it's really responsive you click it it starts to work it's just it's great i, I don't know how else to say to it what do you think uh like i said there's nothing like having actual hardware in your hand uh the retro hardware because we all grew up with these i mean this is the three-handed alien controller you're so confused and you, it's like do i use this or do i use this i don't know what to do most of the times it was this but um yeah, the, the, the whole power pack thing, fun, fun fact, I actually tried to <laughs> unplug it while we were working on it, and Mike screamed across the room, don't unplug it! <laughs> so, uh, it took me like 20 minutes to get it in there. Um, and also, just, 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 just something to keep in mind, it, it, I don't think, I think it was something specific, but it was a little finicky there with my retro pie before we got it, so, take some working. Um, but besides that, it everything else synced up, and I think that I think that's a retro pie issue, and not necessarily an eight bit issue. Right. But it, we ultimately got it. Um, so, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, a wireless controller, man. I mean, and, and you don't have to pay scalpers market prices for one of these to work on your switch. So, any way I can stick it to the scalpers, I do. <laughs> But what do you think? Do you think this will be something good for you? Would you like to do this? It's not really a hard mod. It's just a little finicky on some parts. Uh, is this something you'd use? Let us know in the comments down below. I'm excited. Do you have, does anybody else have the official Nintendo one and this? How do you like them? Uh, if we can get our hands on one, we might do a comparison eventually. But as always, I'm your co-host Mike, and with me was... Conquer Corey. And we'll... See, see ya. ya.